Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I'm having a quick look at this Google Colab Notebook by Catherine Croson originally. This is a slightly modified version and it does the animations that you can see on your screen at the moment. It is still very new, so this is early days yet. This version of the notebook has a number of modifications, as you can see under the modifications provenance section. It's got keyframed prompts and settings, multi prompts. You can set the seed, you can mount your Google Drive, all sorts of quality of life issues. Best of all, this does run in Google Colab free. If you're not familiar with Google Colab, it's very easy. You've got lots and lots of different cells and all these different play buttons. Just click the play button, that will run the cell. First time you click on something, it will give you this warning. So you can just click run anyway, and that will run. Now, first of all, you will need to install your dependencies. So let's just let that run through for a second. Once the dependencies have installed, you can set up your workspace. I'm running this locally, so I'm not going to mount my G drive. I'll show you towards the end of the video how you can get this running on your own GPU. So let's set up that workspace. And now we'll do the imports and definitions. Those are fairly quick as there is nothing to change there. Now we get onto the meat of this thing. So we've got lots and lots of different options here. I'll show you a number of videos that will go through all the different settings, but I'll just go through them quickly now. As mentioned, I'm running this locally. So I'm going to change this from content models to just models. That's my local path. Now this does work with Stable Diffusion 2, but it's best with Stable Diffusion 1, primarily because at the moment the size is fixed to 512 by 512. If you've got your own model, that's fine. You can select custom and the same with a checkpoint. You can select custom as well, and then you can put the custom config and custom checkpoint in there. I'm just gonna leave these on the defaults for now. So there's version one inference, and I'm gonna use the Stable Diffusion 1.4 full EMA. If you like checksums, you can use the check SHA-256 option. I'm just going to uncheck it because it's ever so slightly quicker. Click play on that and that will load the model for us. Once the model has loaded, you're ready to change all the settings. Now, these are the defaults here. So 150 frames, it's quite quick. That's one of the brilliant things about this compared to something like Deforum. It is very fast indeed. So 150 frames, that's absolutely fine. For me, that takes about a minute to generate a seed. I like to leave it on minus one because that's nice and random. Strength, we've got G, got the noise level, step size, friction, quadratic penalty, <laughs> temperature, and the HVP method as well. As mentioned previously, I will give you some videos that actually show you visually what changing all these variables does. But for now, we're just going to leave most of these on the default. The HVP method, however, I am going to change to Ford Funk Torch. If we scroll down a little bit more, then we've got the thing we're all here for, the prompts. There you go. I'm going to leave these on the default as well. But there it is. Portrait of the Queen at 20, Portrait of the Queen at 82, and we've got some time and weights at the end. So there, time zero, the weight is one, and at time 100, the weight is zero. I'm okay with how those look, so I'm just going to click play on that as well. Now you can build the prompt and settings objects and also plot a prompt. So let's have a look at that. And this will give us some nice plots which basically show what's happened. So there is the prompt wait schedule. Starts off at one, goes down to zero at 100. So that is basically what your transition is going to look like. You can then move on to the next cell. There it is, generate animation frames. So you've done it, that's it, it's that easy. You just click play and it starts to generate. And there we have a lovely picture of the queen. So we'll just leave that to render for a few seconds. Once it's finished rendering, you'll be able to generate your video here in the make the video section. I'm just going to change this FPS to 30 and there it gives the name out name out.mp4. You can change that if you want to. I'm going to untick the download video as well, because as mentioned, I am running this locally, so no need to download it. Click the play button that will make the video and then it looks something like this. There we go. That's pretty cool, isn't it? OK, so let's scroll back up again and have a look at these settings. Now, there are a few of them and they have got funny names and the descriptions probably don't help very much at all. Now, for these example videos, basically, I just used exactly the same seed each time, exactly the same prompt, but I just changed one of these settings so you can see what that does. So here is the initial video. This is with all the default settings. 
If I change the conditioning strength up to 0.7, it looks like this. So as you can see, it's a little bit overblown. Personally, I'd suggest values somewhere between 0.1 and 0.4. For the noise level to sample at, we've got the default of two, and if you turn it all the way down to 0.5, it looks like this. The next option is the step size, the default of 0.1. If I turn that up to 0.7, then it looks like this. And as you can see, it's quite jumpy, isn't it? Friction is the next one, and that has a default of one. If we double that friction, like it says, two is critically damped, then it looks like this. Personally, I can't see much of a difference, so I'd probably just leave this at the default. The quadratic penalty has a default of 0.005, and if we turn that all the way up to 0.05, then it looks like this. And the final option is the temperature. The default is one. If we cut that in half, then you can see that does indeed change it quite dramatically. If you want to run this locally, it's basically the same as this install dependency cell here. If you click show code, that'll show you exactly what that installation sequence is done. There are of course a few extra things that you'd need to install on your Linux desktop. So PyTorch is the very first thing I installed, of course, that's available on your remote Google Colab Linux system, but not by default on your own one. The general things are exactly the same as that install dependency cell there, apart from I pop in matplotlib as well. Xformers will help you. Now the Conda version will probably be okay, but personally I do like to compile it and install it myself. So there, pip install Xformers and also Triton as well. And finally, you'll just need to install a couple of things for Colab as well, pip install JupyterLab and also the various server extensions. That information you can get from up here, connect to local runtime, connect to a local runtime there and follow these instructions. So if you have a look at those instructions, that's where I got these from. So there, local runtime, set up instructions, install Jupyter, install the extensions and enable it, and then start the server and authenticate. So if you are running it locally, remember you will have to start up your Jupyter notebook to begin with. Obviously everybody is okay with copy and pasting commands, but in case you're not, let's show you how to do that. So I've got a command there, let's copy that, and I will paste it in my Conda terminal. There it is, copy and paste, that's how you run commands. We'll do exactly the same thing here. Let's copy and paste this one. So we'll PyTorch, copy, paste it into your Anaconda prompt and it will run the commands. Okay, so we've got that. So let's just have a look at this bit here. So the start server and authenticate. Now that is a few lines, it's quite difficult to remember. You can of course just copy and paste it. We'll pop that in there, paste that in there and that will run it. But what I do like to do, obviously I'm running this already, but what I do like to do is actually put this into a little shell script so that I can run it each time. We have a quick look at the directories there. So I've got start runtime, and I cat that, then you'll see it is exactly the same as that there. So then when I want to do the runtime, I just start runtime. There, simple as that. So there you go. It is Stable Diffusion. It's KLMC. I've already got that one, thank you. And it does very nicely. If you want to learn about some more nerdy rodent geekery, then do click on this video.